Hey guys, this is Scott from Underdog, Events and Collectibles in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, for many of us, it's a sad day, right? We are at a unique time in our country's history um, where people have lost their lives. We have loved ones that might be on the front lines of their job or maybe they work in the medical field. Um, so it's a sad day. And um, for many of us that are at home or maybe we're working remotely or maybe we're at the office, it's also a sad day because we all look forward to opening day of Major League Baseball season. And I think if you had asked any of us six months ago if we could envision a world of where an illness would have kept us from opening day, I think all of us would have agreed that's not very likely. Um, but to bring a little joy to you guys, especially you long-term baseball fans, I thought we could at least celebrate opening day by opening a set of one of my favorite um, opening day sets. Long before there was opening day by Tops, there was 1987 Donner's opening day, which I think is one of the most beautiful sets and nostalgic sets of the 1980s. Um, it was released to reflect the opening day rosters of all of the Major League Baseball teams at that time. Of course, this was pre-expansion, or at least our most recent expansion. Um, this was also when the Expos were still in Montreal. So really cool set, really fun set. Also, it turns out that 1987 was an iconic year because of the number of rookies and the key players featured in this set. And we'll talk about a few of those rookies as we go through the set. But I don't know, I thought this would be fun. This is one of my favorite sets. Um, I was 10 years old in 1987, and I absolutely love 1987 Donruss and 1987 Tops. Um, we'll open this set together. Um, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope it brings back some memories. Um, I also hope it's at least a little bit of a replacement for opening day, but I do know that it is in no way a replacement for opening day baseball. Um, in the future, I hope you join us on YouTube, on Facebook, on Twitter as we resume our breaking schedule. Um, as those of you that have been following us know, we are a startup. Um, we got started this summer. Um, the hobby's been so hot, it's been really challenging for allocation, so we have really been working on just selling wax by the box to build our allocation capabilities um, as well as grow our business. We think we're in a little bit better place. We're going to start breaking next week um, as well as continue to sell singles on eBay, Mercari, and through our website www.udogcollect.com. Um, our breaks will be initially available through eBay, um, but our goal is to really move you, um, the, um, the followers of Underdog, but also our traffic to our website. And that will happen over time. So I want to go ahead and crack into this set. Um, enjoy. I want to thank Pristine. We did buy this, as you'll see from the logo. We bought this from Pristine. Um, you'll notice the wrapper is just a bit damaged. Um, we've been in the process of moving, so that actually happened in our move. But this still is an unopened set, and it arrived to us in pristine condition um, from Pristine. So that being said, let's tear into it. So opening day was not sold by the pack. It was only sold as a complete set in boxes like this. Um, one of the primary retailers at the time um, was Target and Kmart. You, this is not something that you would find um, other places. You would find them if you remember KB um, Toys. KB Toys was a really um, popular retailer at, in, in the mall scene back in the 80s. I do apologize for some of the noise you hear in the background. We are... Um, undergoing a bit of renovation right now. So these were all cello wrapped and you had to be really, really careful. So these are very similar to their um, 1987 Donner's counterparts and they're very condition sensitive. So I'm opening it very carefully. Um, one of the things that I love about this set and I find fascinating is given the importance of 1987 from a rookie Hall of Fame class, this is actually a less produced set. And you think about production quantities, the theory, at least given what collectors know, is that this set um, arguably is in the Tiffany range of production. Um, people will dispute that. I don't believe that to be true. I think the Tiffany sets were less produced. Um, but when you lay over the condition sensitivity of a product like this, um, it really highlights um, or it becomes to be a highlight of one of the more rare sets of the 1980s. So you've got Donnie Baseball, 
Jeff Leonard, who had a great year, I believe in 1987, if I remember correctly. Oh, uh, Ricky. Ricky was with the Yankees, had an awesome year in 1987. Rob Deere, Feast or Famine. Cal Daniels, there was a time that this card in Cal Daniels was a super hyped rookie. He had a excellent um, years in 87 through 89 and really looked like he was going to be a core nucleus for the Reds for a decade and he was a huge contributor um, to their playoff runs and World Series victories or World Series victory in 1990. Pete Incavilia, another former prospect. Joe Carter, RBI machine, borderline Hall of Famer. Now I want you to notice something as we go through these. Um, Centering and then corner corner and edge sensitivity is the big thing with 87 opening day as well as just core 87 Donruss. Vince Coleman, Mer Merchant of Speed. And you'll notice, you know, that the centering issues you'll see, like on that Coleman, for example, that's about, you know, 30, 70 centering left or right. Bobby Bonilla. And this was pretty common as well. If you'll notice as I flip through, um, almost all of this run of cards is of a similar centering dynamic. There's the Bo Jackson. Love this card. I would tell you guys, if I were to have an 87 Bo Jackson other than um, 87 Tops Tiffany or 86 um, Tops Traded, this is the card I would want from 87. It, it is a great card. Um, this one's in really good condition, corner and edge wise. Again, the centering looks to be about 60, 40, 70, 30. It's one of the, that card is one of the highlights of the set, though. Sandberg. I mean, this 87 is loaded with Hall of Famers. And not to mention, also very good players. So, Jack Clark, Willie Randolph, Steve Garvey. Will Clark. So, really cool card at Will Clark. Love this card. A lot of Will Clark fans out there. Bill Buckner, rest in peace. As you know, um, this was a, he was quite the controversial figure in 86, 87, given what happened in the World Series. Andres Galarraga. Really did not heat up until. I think it was around 89, but um, this was a quite a sought-after card as well. Again, just a beautiful set. Um, of course, one of the cards we're working toward and that everyone wonders, well, will it be um, the error or not? Um, Barry Bond's card in this set initially featured Johnny Ray. Um, a not so iconic Pittsburgh Pirate. Um, it's estimated that less than 1% of the sets released had Johnny, the Johnny Ray photo instead of the Barry Bonds photo. There's Dave Parker. Now if you notice as we get into this, um, this second column of the set, the centering on these cards is really really solid. Much better than the previous cello wrapped. Don't know how the supply chain worked on this set. Um, obviously they were hand stacked and hand assembled. There's the Tony Gwynn guard. Really good shape by the way. Sorry I was off screen there for a second. Mickey Tettleton. What a run he had. Andy Van Slyke. Tony Fernandez. Rest in peace. He passed away this year. Tom Browning, who would go on to pitch a perfect game and be a key part of the Reds World Series victory a couple years later. Harold Baines, Hall of Famer. Danny Tartable was a up-and-coming prospect in 1987 and went on to have a great career. Daryl Strawberry, that card looks great. Something else to think about, there was Andre Dawson, he actually won the MVP in 1987, also a Hall of Famer, has a little bit of a printing flaw there. Ken Griffey, 
So King Griffey played for the Braves in 1987, was a key contributor on a very bad team. But that year, in 1987, was actually the year, um, that June, his son, King Griffey Jr., was drafted and would appear in the major leagues two years later. Terry Pendleton went on to win the MVP. Kevin Mitchell, one of my favorite players as a kid, um, was, a, was a bit of a late bloomer, but had quite a run where over about a three to four year span, um, he had over 120 home runs. Hojo, also another player that looked for a while like he was going to be a future Hall of Fame talent and a mainstay for the Mets. Was still a really meaningful contributor, but um, never fulfilled the potential he showed um, in the late 80s. Paul Molitor, Hall of Famer. Mike Schmidt, Hall of Famer. Ray Knight, key player. This was at the end of his career. Um, key member of the Big Red Machine. George Brett, beautiful card. Um, another thing on these cards that you'll see, and this is not something that you would see as they're pulled fresh, but the ink on opening day was a bit subpar. And um, you will see PSA 10s that have perfect corners, um, and perfect edges, great centering, and then over time the ink will have faded. I actually have, um, I'm a big Reds and Braves fan, and I have a Barry Larkin PSA 10 rookie from this set that the ink has started to fade on. Typically that you'll see the ink fade in this area. Dale Murphy, one of my favorite players. Dave Winfield, Hall of Famer. Robin Yount, Hall of Famer. Eric the Red, this was a very popular card as well um, back in 19, in the late 1980s. He had a huge year. I love this card, love the photography. Kirby Puckett. Looks like that one was shot in the on deck circle. We are getting close to the um, Barry Bonds guys. Luke Whitaker, a player many believe should be in the Hall of Fame. And there is the Bonds. So this is not the error. That bond's in um, pretty good condition. We've got a slightly soft corner in the bottom right and a little bit of centering. And um, it's probably, gosh, it looks 70-30 left to right. I love that card. Oh, where I was going is that, um, you know, one of the key cards from 87 and probably the second, I guess maybe the second most valuable card um, is the Greg Maddox rookie. But Greg Maddox was not featured in the opening day set. He was not um, on the Cubs opening day raw or projected opening day roster. And that is also why if you remember in 87, he's not featured in 87 tops either. He is um, in the traded set and that's his traded rookie XRC. Benito Santiago. George Bell. I mentioned earlier that Andre Dawson won the 87 MVP. George Bell um, won the 87 American League MVP. Mike Scott had a terrific year as well. Gary Carter, Hall of Famer. Burt Blylevin, Hall of Famer. Love this Ozzie Smith card. Just love the, the swing. Shot of his swing. Jim Rice, Hall of Famer. Alan Trammell, Hall of Famer. Again, Cal Ripken, one of the most loaded. 87, 88, those sets feature more Hall of Famers than almost any set in the history of baseball cards. Not well centered, but still a cool card. Devin White, who was quite, quite the prospect, went on to a solid career. Julio Franco, I think he was already um, about 85 years old in this 
card but still had the jerry curl of a 28-year-old. Um, and there's one of my, probably my favorite card in the set, the Barry Larkin. Man, those corners are super sharp. Um, unfortunately, not super well-centered, but a beautiful card. All right. We've got now the last pack of the set with um, Jose at the top. Man. This one is sealed, and I'm really, this is one of the reasons that you'll see a little bit of extra value attached to the cards that would show on top of this set, simply because um, it was really difficult to open them and not damage the corners. Of course, the, the perception of, of, sensitive, of condition sensitivity wasn't as great. Um, I'm afraid this one's going to be a really off-centered stack. You can tell by the Conseco. Reggie Jackson, always gave it a full swing. Uh, one of my favorite cards, Fred McGriff. Very off-center, but, but great card. Carlton Fisk in the Hall of Fame. And again, guys, I apologize the noise in the background. There's really nothing I can do to fully shut it out. So um, the set wraps up. You had a team checklist that featured the, the um, opening day um, lineups or their projected opening day lineups for each team. Every um, box then also featured um, three puzzle pieces and Clemente was the puzzle piece of that year. These are really cool and you actually have pirates and Clemente collectors that love these and we'll get them um, slabbed and graded. Well, guys, hey, thanks for tuning in. I hope this was at least a little bit of opening day fun for you. Um, if, it, if it were up to me, if you were a guy that collected in the 80s like I did, go out and get yourself a Larkin rookie. Get yourself a Bonds from opening day. Eric Davis, Gwen, Galarraga, all these guys, Bo Jackson. Um, it's a great set. Um, I can't wait to actually be talking about real baseball with you guys again soon. Um, but enjoy you giving this video a watch and learning a little bit more about Underdog. Um, have a great day and stay safe. And I'll be um, praying for your families and hope that they are well and healthy as we get through COVID-19. Good, goodbye. Hang out.